Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Community Live Recap. Uh, my name is Eric Willis, Executive Vice President and Chief Commercial Officer here at CureWorks. I'm, I'm joined by some, some superstars today from the Highland world. We've got Colleen Albert, Product Evangelist. Hello. We wave to each other because we can't be in the same room. <laughs> right? Hi, everyone. And then we've got Glenn Gibson, Director of Product Communication. Hi, Glenn. Hello. Well, yeah, this is our this is our thing. Is our <laughs> Anytime we need to talk today, we're just gonna go like this. So, All right. okay. Yeah. Well, again, thanks for everyone for attending. I know a lot of you joined us last week at Community. Or was that two weeks ago now? Community Live, and um, you know it was it was different this year, obviously, right? And I know we, you know, three of us didn't get to see each other. We didn't get to see a lot of our customers. We did have a lot of our customers at the event, first timers folks that were able to leverage the virtual experience and be able to take part in the conference for the first time. So today we have a look at the attendee list folks that are coming back on the conference, but then uh, we also have a lot of folks that didn't uh, conference. So this will be a great recap. We're going to uh, hand it off here to Colleen to walk through the agenda and then we'll go from there. Colleen. All right. Thank you so much, Eric, and welcome everyone. Uh, Community Live was definitely different this year. Still a lot of fun, and in some way, pulled up connections and explore different aspects of the conference. Uh, our theme this year of the conference and is evolve. And Bill talked about evolution of the Highland organization, our product portfolio, and migrating to the club, and a little bit of everything in between. Uh, before we kick off with some of our highlights from the conference, just remember that all of the content is available on demand until December 11th. Even I've been going back and watching Sasha, you know, and now you have the luxury of being able to pause and then come back, explore things in a different way. But also, if you are on the line right now and you weren't with us at Community Live, still register and you'll see that at the bottom like you were for the conference, take advantage of the free packet and it'll open up the whole conference platform for you with sessions, even some of the content that was found within our virtual booth. So please take advantage of this. It's only going to be till December 11th. So please explore at the very minimum. So once you've registered or you're in the platform, this is what you'll see the Colorado platform, the Community Live Conference virtual best we could or could have in the world. On the left-hand side, the quick links to the keynotes. That's where you'll find Community Central there. You can see that in green. But also, even some of the fun stuff is still available as well. So, you know, some of the recorded yoga classes and, you know, networking events. And, you know, so we had some magic. All of those are out there, too. And they're all featuring different Highlanders that you may know. So they're a lot of fun to watch. A couple highlights. We had over 200 different breakout sessions, each with a 30 minute slot. So a little bit shorter than we normally did to make the content a little bit more digestible in a virtual world. All of them are available on demand, although only a subset of the breakout sessions are available for free. But if you did purchase one of the paid tiers, you'll have access to all 200 breakout sessions on demand, uh, including all of the keynotes as well. So Eric and Glenn and I, you know, talked before and we were all pulling out various highlights. And I think for us, the highlights were really Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday keynotes, each of which we want to highlight now. And if I were to encourage you to do anything, it would be to go back and revisit those keynotes, specifically John Phelan's keynote on Thursday, which uh, Glenn will recap for us in a bit. So the main conference, you know, so Monday, Tuesday, like we would normally have the Sunday, Monday labs, those were shifted to Monday, Tuesday, and that's where we saw the half day labs all done virtually on this really cool platform where you could see what everyone else was doing and your instructor could kind of jump into your machine and, and get a glimpse and, and really work through some virtual environments. The main conference, as usual, uh, started on Wednesday and kicked off with Bill Premer's keynote. And he did a, a great job. I would say that virtually probably because the executives were confined to a, a time slot and they were recorded so they could make mistakes and re-record uh, were the best they have ever been. Uh, Bill talked about our Evolve theme as a company, how we're evolving in our portfolio. He also talked about the social justice movement and how we have to insist 
on equality. And I'm certainly feeling that as a Highlander and he's done a great job of expanding our reach and doing more in the Cleveland area to insist on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so it was really cool to hear those comments about not only where the company's going, you know, on the product and technology side, but where we're going on the people front as well and how important those initiatives are to Highland and to all of us. He then talked about software and noted that we spend $125 million in R&D annually. And he highlighted these top pieces of technology or functionality. I'm not gonna go into each one now, Glenn will cover a couple of them in just a moment, but each one of these technology topics has one or more free breakout session. So if you're interested in diving into WorkView for the first time or learning more, there's a couple of free sessions there. Capture has a couple of free sessions. The Highland Capture Overview was one of the top attended sessions. And then we've got our new Highland Experience Capture as well, which is the first manifestation of the Highland Experience platform, which you'll hear more about from Glenn in a minute. Highland RPA, our acquisition of another Monday, you know, kind of broke ground a little bit at Community Live. We highlighted that quite a bit. CCM with Content Composer. And then lastly, Governance Rules as a Service, which is uh, you know, the cloud-based retention rules service that we offer for your on-based content. Real quick, Colleen. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, just one piece I wanted to add, I think you, you, you hit it nicely with Bill there, is for a lot of you that may not have had experience in interacting with Bill before, and, and a lot of you did get a chance to interact with him. He actually joined us on Wednesday morning. We had a uh, coffee kickoff with CuraWorks, uh, and Bill joined us and talked a lot about those same things in his keynote. But I also, you know, as Colleen said, recommended going back and watching the keynotes, but also for if you have executives that you work with today and you want to get them exposure to Highland, to the vision that Highland has for the product, hear about how it's a great company to partner with, it's a great way to try to get, hey, ask one of your executives, I just want 30 minutes of your time, or yeah, less than that, right? 30 mm -hmm. minutes of your time just to hear from the president and CEO of Highland on such a great company they are, the vision they have, and why we've continued to invest with them. So again, just to reiterate Colleen's point there, use this opportunity with these recorded sessions to broaden the exposure of the platform and the company to other folks in your organization. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Eric. So that brings us to Thursday. And I really enjoyed, and I think we all did, uh, the guest keynote, Juliet Funt. And she is the president and CEO of a company called White Space at Work. And most of the talk was just this, you know, like us looking at her and she was absolutely engaging and gave, gave some great tips for how to find more white space in your day. But she also laid out a framework for daily success from when working from home. And I encourage you to go back and, and visit this just for your own personal development. She gave us a three-part framework, which she called Setup, Rhythm, and Closure. And I'll just do a quick overview because I want you to watch the session. But she said, first, you know, you have to set up your day, not only your physical space, your workspace, wherever you are, and get those visual cues. But she also talked about having a paper anchor that on a piece of paper next to you, you'll write up, what do I want to get accomplished today? Then she talked about rhythm, that you have to get yourself into a work from home schedule, a, a, a schedule for your day, but that you can do little things to create more white space and more rhythm. And she, she one tip that she gave that I really liked was said, you have to go on an email diet that you set, maybe it's the top of the hour, the end of the hour, every two hours, that's only when you're gonna check email. Not every time you get a ding, not every five minutes you're gonna click back to your Outlook, but you have to be regimented and go on this email diet and only do it a, a little bit throughout the day. I feel like it was more like uh, email intermittent fasting. Yeah. <laughs> right? Where, right? To be more on trend, right? Let's not talk about a diet, but more it's intermittent it's fasting. Totally where just, hey, email just this one chunk and then I gotta go off for the rest of the day. And I get to do email again and one other. Day, so. <laughs> I love that. And then lastly, she said, you, you have to have a, a complete closure. And there's a couple of things you can do. The first is if you're lucky enough to be able to completely shut the door on your workspace at home, do it. But even if you're not, you close the laptop and you stand up and you say, I'm done with work. 
and you let someone hear you to hold you accountable. So she gave some really great tips. If you go back into the Entrato tool into the platform, not only can you watch her keynote, but there's a really great handout out there that you know overviews, gives a nice overview of the, the framework that I encourage you to listen to. And then just concluding with her piece before I hand it over to Glenn, she gave this statistic that $1 million of annual waste is spent for every 50 employees. And by annual waste for these 50 employees, she was talking about things like going to meetings or doing work that doesn't really matter or you know, filling out forms and paperwork and things that doesn't really aid to the bottom line of the business or that employee's true value in innovating new ideas and accomplishing tasks and new projects. And she said, one way to get around this is to use these white space simplification questions because we need that white space in our lives to do the innovative stuff, to actually complete the big tasks. So she gave us these four questions that you can just ask yourself daily, multiple times a day, once a month, doesn't matter. You know, is there anything I can let go of? Where is good enough? Good enough? Like, is this good enough? Can I turn it in as it is? You know, what do I truly need to know? Maybe you don't need to be at every meeting. What do I truly need to know? And then what deserves my attention right now? I love these questions. I think Eric and I both agree this is one of the best parts of her talk. I encourage you to go back and listen to her. Yeah, we, we've used this ourselves already in our, you know, we have a, especially with just what's going on as a way to stay connected, we have a, a morning management meeting every single day. And we've used a few of those when addressing a few problems and a few situations of, you know, we don't have to be perfect, right? You know, sometimes good is good enough. And, you know, do we need to stress out about some of these things or can we shut it off and, and refocus our efforts in other areas? So you know, we've been yeah. trying to create some of that white space ourselves. I agree. Between the paper anchor and asking myself those same questions, I've begun to apply them already as well. All right, Glenn Gibson, the stage is yours, my friend. All right, perfect. So then we come to John's presentation. And if you've been around Highland for a long time, you will have seen an obvious shift where we never really used to talk much about what was coming longer term, where we're heading as a vendor with our products. And that has definitely changed over the last couple of years. And John's presentation on Thursday was no different to that as well. Oh, can we go back one? Let's just see right here. John talked about a couple of major themes and he was really addressing where we're at. We can't talk about what we're doing with technology without acknowledging this crazy year that we've all been involved in. And he talked about these challenges of working virtually with, with each other. Um, the pace of change, which has been exhausting to try and like keep up with. And then just this mo motion that you know, now customers are coming to us to talk about cloud more than us talking to customers about cloud. And these are all very relevant topics. So what he then did is he correlated aspects of our product vision to really these challenges. So this idea of engaging virtually with each other and with our customers really puts additional stress and pressure on this aspect of our product vision. And this is a line out of our published product vision. And then he talked about and showed how we are bringing this to life. So he explained that Highland's strategy for, for UX is fundamentally moving forward. We're complementing our current clients that, we've, that we deliver today with a range of these reusable components, which we are then in turn using to refresh existing user experiences and build a whole new range of persona driven applications for specific use cases. So he showed a bunch of examples in the keynote. I'm just going to show a couple here. Um, our new combined viewer is using these new components, responsive by design, et cetera. So this is one example is a session on that specifically to check it out. Our new on-base mobile built using the same concept of reusable components. What this means for us is we can deliver apps um, which were, are going to be consistent across browsers, devices, whatever, and that is an excellent um, move forward. So these are steps forward in that direction. So definitely check out the new on-base mobile, which aligns to that future direction for Highland as well. That second challenge was the pace of change. And this is where he stressed our commitment to continuing our focus on configurable solutions, which I'm sure is great news for everybody. If this is one of the reasons why you partnered with Highland and with Kerryworks as well with, within, our, within these solutions. So what he kind of talked about is how this has been part of our DNA. 
across our content services for years, point and click configurable tools from configuring scan queues all the way through to one of Colleen and I's favorites, records management and everything in between. And he used that as a backdrop when we kind of talk through all of the things that we have invested in today as something that will continue, but then also use this to frame up how and why we chose to um, acquire another Monday for our robotic process automation, which is coming to life as Highland RPA. That company also had the same philosophy for point and click configuration, and that's why we liked it, why it was such a great fit for our portfolio. And he showed a great demo of actually augmenting an on-base workflow with Highland RPA. So check out that session two, excellent session two. Then he talked more about our future low code development. So similar to our client strategy, where we're building on what we deliver today and augmenting with new tools, we are building upon our existing set of low code configuration tools that you are familiar with and really moving this into the future with this idea of a new web-based application ecosystem. And the first manifestation of this is as a prototype and an early demo of something yet to be released, which is Highland Forms. This new forms builder is going to be repository agnostic under the covers to the point where this is the same form builder that can be used for configuring forms for OnBase and for perceptive content and in the future for other Highland platforms too. These are responsive, quicker than ever to create and very straightforward to deploy and then roll out as responsive forms across the environment. So really exciting stuff. There was a session uh, upon the future of our user experience, the future of solution building. So if you're interested in that, check that session out as well. And then the third one was really around this acknowledgement of cloud and our platform vision being really a cloud first with an acknowledgement that many of you today are still remaining on premises. And John kind of laid out our own internal philosophy with cloud as this concept of good, better, and best. So by good, what he was really saying is customers who have the Highland product and partner with Kerryworks, this is a good place to be. Now, if, when you're cho choosing where to run your software, whether you're on premise or in a third party cloud, you still have to acknowledge that you are retaining responsibility for this big list that you see on the screen right here. This is a critical thing to understand because when customers come to us or Kerryworks and say, we're thinking about moving our, our on-base environment or whatever into AWS or Azure, that's good, but you still have to make sure that you have the expertise to look after all of that. This is where the Highland Cloud value proposition is because this really takes the responsibility of all those things and allows you to focus just on the things that matter for your organization too. So that was uh, better is to be in the Highland Cloud. Then best is really where we're going in the future with the Highland Experience platform. This is a cloud first platform that will deliver value to your existing products. And the first manifestation of this was our newly released Highland Experience Capture app, of which there's a whole session around showing how this can enhance your existing solution with AI machine learning driven capture solutions in the cloud, whether you are a cloud customer today, or even on premise, it can be the front end capture for your solution as well. So um, some really exciting stuff that he showed, it's a great session on that. And the three calls to action that he left really behind were upgrade to foundation, take advantage and investigate what else is in the Highland portfolio and strongly consider migrating to the cloud, yes, but to the Highland cloud, much better. With that, Colleen, back to you. Mm -hmm. Eric? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, one of the things that we've really seen, I'll, I'll highlight a little bit later yeah. as well, but I think, Glenn, one of the things that you said rings true so much for us is that our customers are coming to us almost weekly about moving to the cloud, right? And one of the sessions I'll highlight, highlight later, but I'll touch on it now too, is that there's a lot of thought that goes into it though, right? And and I think that we've, you know, part of the benefit of working with us and having our partnership with Highland is that we can really help you guys plan that out, right? Because you really have to go through and develop a plan, figure out how you're gonna attack it, 
but we ha we've had some recent success with several customers that migrated over to the Highland Cloud in 2020. We have several active projects of migrating over. Um, but you, you, you couldn't have said it better though, Glenn. It, it's just that the demand for moving to the cloud is bigger than ever. And I think it's really people understanding this vision and realizing that it is that right step to go to now and get into that better mode so that they're ready to be best uh, when when that when the Highland experience is, is ready for them. So, and I'll touch on a little bit on Highland RPA as well uh, in my excitement level there later. Okay, later? Later, I'll wait till my <laughs> on the screen. All right. So thank you, Glenn. Uh, this brings us to Friday. And Friday morning, our keynote was America Ferreira. And it was exceptional. The whole keynote, 45 minutes, was Eva and America just on screen like this. So Eva was the facilitator asking America questions, but they had a great dialogue. And it was so inspirational. It was wonderful. You like felt better as a person when you laughed. She talked about you know, her history in the acting world, she's famous for Ugly Betty and the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and how she kind of forayed into being a director. And she's recently collaborated with other first generation Americans to write a book, American Like Me, which I have on hold at the library right now. I'm so excited to read it. But I encourage you to listen to this talk. It's just such a feel good, you know, and she gives so many great tips and opportunities to better yourself and to think about how you personally can become the best version of yourself. I want you to watch it, so I won't give it all away, but here are some of the, the key takeaways that I jotted down. I took you know too many notes probably. She said, you have to take a personal responsibility for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that just being a good person is not enough. And you have to look at the opportunities that are available and think to yourself, well, who does this opportunity really serve? And she gave, gave this great example that stuck with me about, you may think to yourself, well, our company has unpaid internships that everyone is welcome to apply for. Well, then you have to ask yourself the question, well, who is able to take an internship that is unpaid? What type of person would that be? And then these are the same people that would continue to get the opportunities again and again. She also talked about letting go of who you think you are so that you can become who you actually are or who you are next. And she talked about you know, transitioning from being an actor to a director and then an author and how they seem like they might be semi-related, but they're very different. So she had to let go of herself as this character actor to get into directing. You have to give up comfort to find what else you are capable of. And this really, I think, applies to all of us on the line. You know, We might be looking at our job role right now and thinking, I'm really good at that, but what more can we do and how can we step out of our comfort zone to advocate for our talents, for the solutions that we have, to try new things and put ourselves out there? She talked about using the power of storytelling, which I think is important to all of us. That's how we make human connection and relate. And the more we can share a story about what we're going through, the more we can build that connection with others. And then lastly, which I loved, just to be gentle with yourself, to do some yoga, to drink some red wine, eat some chocolate, and be gentle with yourself, especially during these times. And then we had Darius Rucker in for a virtual concert. You know, unfortunately, we can't recreate that here. If only we had someone who played the guitar. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> now, now, real quick, did either of you guys go back to that? Did yeah. either of you guys think at any time, it's a little bit tough to rehear, yeah. those two images in the background behind Darius and Quinn, whether or not those were the original blueprints of Avon base back there that used to hang. <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe someone went back there and hung those up. So it looked like a little bit like a, a mapped out plan, but. Yeah, it does kind of look like it now that you say that. I didn't think that though when I was first watching it, but this was really great and a lot of fun. This was Friday afternoon great way to end the conference so lastly what can you or what could you have experienced all three days that is still available on demand and that is community central so if you navigate from the home page to community central you'll see down at the bottom those are all of the different virtual booths that are available and while no one will be there live to actually answer your questions i won't really be there live <laughs> i just have lit up for this screenshot um, there are product overviews, little videos, demos, resources. Uh, we are still collecting survey information. So if you want to get feedback, uh, each one of the booths has a survey where we're collecting customer feedback so we know what to do next. But there are still resources available out there that I encourage you to visit. A lot of demos that were created just for Community Live.
I'll just flash this up for a second so that we can keep moving forward. These were according to, so the nice thing about the virtual is we have the best tracking ever in terms of what sessions were well attended and we have more surveys than ever. So we know which ones were well liked. These were the top 10 attended breakout sessions and they are all free and all available on demand. These are the top five handouts. So as part of the session or in a booth, there were multiple PDFs that you could download. These are the top five handouts. You'll get this deck, but you can also take yeah. a quick Colleen, grab one, Colleen, real quick, one thing I'll add to that that I've already used is the there's a really nice feature is if you're when you're looking at resources, you can just click save and it adds it to your virtual briefcase. Mm -hmm. Then if you just go to your picture at the top right, click briefcase, you can then download all of them as a zip file and it's super easy. So as you're browsing, just click save, 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 and then one click, it'll download them all. It's super easy and straightforward. Good point, good point. And here is that an example of the top handout, which I encourage you to grab, is the evaluating and expanding your Highland solution. And this kind of leads into, well, now you've got all this great information from all these sessions you've watched, where do you go next? And this is that workbook that kind of walks you through each one of the nine categories of the Highland product portfolio and ask pointed questions as to where you might be able to expand to achieve that gold standard. Okay, so we're going to wrap up real quick with a, a rapid fire. Uh, oh. What are our favorite sessions? And I'll go first and then pass to Glenn. I think for me, the product sessions, of course, because that's where I live. But my favorite this year was the integration with Salesforce. Uh, Don Dittmar and Nick Donald, who are the PM and the PO for the product, talk about where we've come, where we work so nicely together, what some of the roadmap looks like, and really how it can be this, you know, cost-effective solution for those Salesforce users who just need documents from OnBase that are related to that Salesforce content at a low-level price point, keeps them in their native experience, and it's built with all the new modern components. All right, Glenn. So my, yeah, my favorite was the, uh, the first session ever was a session dedicated to the Highland Product Roadmap delivered by our VP of Product yeah. Marketing. And then we also had an open discussion, a fireside chat with four product executives and we were getting slammed with questions in half an hour and our executives did a great job of uh, navigating those providing some insights into where we're going so recorded check that one out too all right and eric and then last but not least there i already talked about the migrating to the cloud playbook i definitely recommend for anyone that's thinking about going to the cloud check it out it really starts walk steve did a fantastic job of just walking through what you need to start thinking through and planning, right? It's not just a simple, oh, tomorrow we're in the cloud, right? You gotta think about what type of scripts do I have? Do I have any external work view classes? There's all these things that you just maybe haven't thought about that legacy of years of using OnBase of how it's gonna look like in the cloud. So great session there. And then our whole organization is super excited about Highland RPA. Um, this week, we actually have been attending a sales enablement and technical enablement, and Bill Berger and I were so excited that we put everyone through it. So on the Monday and Tuesday, I had my whole entire sales team, marketing team, uh, sales engineer team attend the two days of sales enablement training. And then yesterday, today, and Friday, we've had all of our principal consultants, all of our uh, solution development team, attending the technical enablement for those of you and obviously we touched on it uh, earlier in glenn's session but this is a perfect one for you guys to learn about the future and i think bill berger mentioned it internally the other day is that you know he's been in the on base world for 20 almost 25 years right and this right here is the thing he's the most excited about that he's ever seen from a highland standpoint and what it can mean not just for our current customers, but future customers. And it's a great way just to go back and reevaluate your current processes that you've already automated with OnBase and think about just day one, how could I deploy RPA to further automate those existing processes? It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm, I'm implementing RPA across my whole entire organization and I'm taking on this Herculean effort, right? I could choose just to deploy one, two bots that automate a single component of a process that today someone's having to leave on base to go and handle. So again, I, I think that's the easiest way for you guys that are already in the on base world is look at those workflows that you have built, look at those case management applications and think of those little steps in the process where, ah, 
yeah, we always have to go out to this website and look up this piece of information and bring it into OnBase. Or we have to go and update a website with maybe a status of something that occurred within our business process. Those are great little elements to be able to deploy RPA, get a taste of it, get experience with it, and not it have to be this huge thing that you're taking on. So we're super excited about it. You're gonna hear a lot about it from the CureWorks team, and I think the future's very bright with Highland RPA. All right, so what questions do you all have for us? Uh, feel free to type them into the chat, and then we will ask uh, Christy to read any that have come in aloud. Uh, while you're doing that, please, uh, we'll, we'll hang on a few more minutes if you've got it to answer any questions. You know, what are some of the next steps? I think after you watch some of these uh, on-demand sessions, you know, work with CareWorks, your account manager, to roadmap the next 12 months. I think you've got to, and this is where you get that courage from America for, you know, be prepared to talk to executives and sponsors in your organization about 2021 and what you think makes the most sense, whether it's foundation or the cloud or Salesforce or Highland RPA. Uh, we also have a community live webinar that is out on community about the strategic workshops. And that's with the help of Highland kind of coming into your organization and really sitting down and making a plan with the consultative approach. And then last but not least, save the date for next year we are going to be october and hopefully we will be in las vegas so october 10th through the 14th will be community live 2021 hopefully in las vegas nevada and ellen your quote from the survey from community live was actually up on the monday morning meeting stage and bill read it aloud to all of us just to thank all the highlanders for what they did so i thought perfect we will end with that since you are a member of the curie works community and with that, we will take any questions that you may have. Uh, CommunityLive.com is where you can register or where you can log into all of the recorded sessions. And with that, Christy, do we have any questions that have come in? You guys must have been very thorough because I don't have any questions showing. <laughs> no problem. All right, we'll give it another 10 seconds. Thank you all so, so much for joining, for your attention. Eric, uh, glad this was tons of fun, so it's fun. Yeah, to thank you guys for taking the time to share your experiences with our team and looking forward to hopefully being face-to-face -face next year in Vegas and having a good party. Yeah, Monday. for sure. Oh, okay. please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no more community lives from my basement. No. <laughs> Okay, Christy, any other last ones that came in or are we good to go? I think we're good to wrap up. Okay, right. well again, thanks everyone. Have a great